Hi everyone, welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching. Thank you so much for joining me. Now in today's video we're going to take a look at the all-important shift of Rahu and Ketu into Taurus and Scorpio. So Rahu is leaving Gemini, moving into Taurus, and Ketu is leaving Sagittarius and moving into Scorpio. Now many people believe that Taurus and Scorpio are actually the exaltation places for Rahu and Ketu. I actually don't read Rahu or Ketu as being exalted or debilitated or any of those things. Uh, I just read them in a very plain and simple way because that's how I've been taught, that's what I'm accustomed to. But the other thing is that they are mathematical points in the sky. So they're not bodies as such in the sky. So I don't tend to read them in that way. But I did take a look at how they're sitting in relation to the other planets, especially the large, heavy moving planets. How are they placed? And I do think things are going to be better by this shift. So on an overall note, I think this shift is going to be better or it will at least provide some stabilizing energies for when the heavy moving planets are passing through Capricorn and when Jupiter is debilitated. Because I believe when in the months when Jupiter is debilitated and we've got Saturn and Pluto moving through that house, I think Saturn and Pluto are going to want to destroy systems, destroy old outmoded ways of doing things, hopefully destroy corrupt things or bring to the surface things that need to be healed or cleansed off the planet. So while that work is happening, I think this Rahu Ketu axis will be a good stabilizing force. Um, so I've got the note here, on the whole, this shift is going to feel better than Rahu Ketu in Gemini and Sagittarius. Why is that? Um, and I've got written here, yeah, definitely a better relationship with the heavy outer planets. So previously when Rahu and Ketu were in Gemini and Sagittarius, um, their relationships to the outer planets, the heavy outer planets, were a kind of 6-8 relationship and a 2-12 relationship. Um, so those of you who follow astrology, you'll know what I mean. Uh, these are uncomfortable relationships. They don't work very nicely. Now with Rahu Ketu in um, Taurus and Scorpio, it's going to be better. So we're going to have Rahu in a 5-9 kind of position with Saturn. And we're going to have Ketu 3-11 uh, from those heavy outer planets. So over the next year and a half, Rahu and Ketu are providing stabilizing energy for us. It's good energy. I don't see um, that these should cause too much problems. Though if they do, I'm going to go into that. So let's take a look at the next bit I wanted to look at. Oh, by the way, Rahu Ketu's shift is 1.5 years and it starts on 20th September 2020. And that's according to my astrological software, which is Parashara's Light 9.0. I tried to find, am I reading true node or mean node? But I couldn't find that setting on my software this time. But doesn't matter. Last time I think I did an introduction where I talked about mean node and true node and I'm going to link to that below. Uh, I might link to it above or at the end as well. So if you want you can go back to the old Rahu Ketu video and you can watch that to understand a bit more about um, true node and mean node and all that kind of thing. I've gone into the difference there with the diagram. You can also, as a fun activity, you can also re-watch your um, outlook to see if that really happened or if those really were the areas in your life that you were working through. Very often it's quite good to go back um, and retrospectively look at the astrology and see, okay, was the astrologer right? Did that happen for me or did it not happen for me? I do that kind of thing. Um, the other thing I wanted to say to you is that when you watch your mini reports, please do watch Yes From Your Moon. That's my favorite because the moon is your mind. And the moon is going to be ha is, is the first way that you start to interpret things. But read, uh, watch from your ascendant as well. Definitely watch from your ascendant. Um, when you watch from your ascendant, you're looking at your physical life path. You're, you're looking at how 
your life path unfolds and manifests in reality. So look at your physical life path, um, you know, how, how things manifest for you. Look from the moon, your mind. You can also look from your sun, the soul. Um, you can look from any major planet, or if you have a favorite planet, if you have a particular planet that you just love and really resonate with and you want to read from that, you can. And what I would recommend is stick to two. So maybe pick, I always watch my ascendant and my moon. So definitely watch your uh, ascendant and moon. Sometimes I'll watch my sun. Sometimes I'll even check in with my Saturn. But um, yeah, it's, you know, see what you're drawn to, to look up. But what, when we're looking at this shift, what can we expect? So I've gone through some of the technicalities about the 6-8 relationship with other planets and all that kind of thing. But in terms of how could this manifest, what can we expect to see? That's what we all want to know. So I'm going to throw some things out there. They're sort of loose predictions. They're mainly ideas, maybe. Maybe we're brainstorming here and coming up with some ideas. Because I had just a couple more new thoughts, which I haven't written down yet. So we'll do some brainstorming live even. How about that? So I'm going to go into the positive things about the shift of Rahu, what, how that could manifest. And I'm going to look at as well the not so good things regarding Rahu's shift as well. Uh, I'll try not to depress anyone too much, don't worry. Um, I'll, we'll then look at the positive things about the Ketu shift. And then we'll look about the negative things about Ketu shift, how this, this could play out. So let's take a look. So we've got positive things about this Rahu shift, what to look out for. This could be a very good time to spend with family. Uh, one of the easy predictions to make about this shift is that there'll be many family reunions. There'll be many, f you know, f family, if, you, if you've been um, apart because of lockdown or you haven't been able to see people or all this kind of thing, I do believe that you'll be able to make your way um, to be with your family during this 1.5 year transit. It's an interesting one with the whole flying thing. When is that going to happen again? But I think in Europe it is happening again. I know. Friends over there have told me that they've been flying lately. So I think, um, you know, I'm sure if you're going to your home or your country of birth or the place where you're from, you should be able to do that. But definitely I, I can see here, like I've written down great time to spend with family or create a family out of friends or all contacts that might come back into the picture. Family reunions, people coming together, that real family feel um, should be heightened over this time. I've got a note here which might seem trivial but a uh, great time to change your diet potentially. Um, I've got the note could be hard for addicts, could be a time to get addicted to something. <laughs> you know, not that anyone wants to do that but um, watch out for that because it's Rahu Venus and Rahu Venus can often be um, a thing of addiction. So perhaps if you're trying to get off something, you've got a few days left to do that. Um, but yeah, it could be a time to experiment with your diet. It could be a time to try new foods. Maybe if you've never been a vegetarian, you might try it, you know. Um, but not that that's the thing. Maybe you've been a vegetarian all your life and then you discover bone broth and you're like, oh my God, this is amazing. This is nourishing me better than anything. So this might be a time when a lot of vegans go back to meat or something, you know. Um, could be quite interesting. So I think, you know, diets could change. Uh, I've got a note here. Heavy planets are all in earth signs. Great time to get grounded, get real, get practical. Um, transform your personal finances. Think long term. Restructure yourself financially. This could be a time when you start saving again. Maybe over the past few years you've found it really hard to save and it just hasn't been working out for you or you've been in a lot of debt or it's been difficult. Um, this could be the time where you're actually able to save. And when you watch the mini reports, you'll see um, a bit more detail whether that's you because there are some people where it's shifting where they're going to have more expenses. So that will come down to your personal chart more, I think. Uh, but in an overall sense, you know, maybe... Yeah, maybe savings accounts will be the thing again, or I'm not sure. A lot of people living life off debt, um, which is fine. That, that works for people. Uh, let's have a look at the not so good things regarding Rahu's shift. Okay, so here are some loose predictions that I'm making. Uh, issues with food supply. 
So I had a look through the axis and because we're dealing with food, I thought, what about the global food supply? What's that going to be like? Um, there could be issues with this. So last time Ketu was in Taurus, in 2011, there was a famine in Somalia that killed a quarter of a million people. Um, so that is quite shocking. And I did hear uh, on one of the news, alternative news sources I listened to, that there's talk of famine in China. So I'm wondering about this. And because Ketu was in Taurus in 2011, that suppressed, it's a suppression energy. So it suppressed the food getting to the people. Now here we've got Rahu in Taurus, which is an expansion energy. But then if we look at what happened with Rahu in Gemini, we did see problems with the airline industry. That is for sure. That definitely happened over the last year and a half. Uh, you know, I saw travel companies go bust and, and now we're seeing it. All the planes are grounded. They're all bankrupt. Or so I've read or heard. So this thing of um, Rahu being, so Ketu, the suppression energy, caused in 2011 a, a famine. Okay, Rahu being there, Rahu's an expansion energy. What could that do? Well, and I was thinking about this and I was also thinking about, okay, Rahu also represents foreign things and chemicals. And I started thinking about, you know, could there be some Monsanto-like endeavor to spray food or something? And yeah, I started thinking about sort of poisoning or tampering with food supply or um, you know, issues with food. I also thought, because it's an expansion energy, could it be that there could be far too much food in one part of the world, thereby leaving um, another part starving or something along those lines? So, you know, we, we will discover as we go along together in this next 1.5 years how this manifests, but this is one idea that I've been looking at. Uh, if there are any issues with food supply in the next 1.5 years. Yeah, this would be hard with all the earth energy and grounding of planes that happened after Rahu's transit in air sign Gemini. So that could be the issue. Maybe um, we're not able to fly food around or, or something like that. Um, I did think about that. The other thing I saw with Rahu's shift, and I had predicted this in an earlier video some months ago. If I find that clip, I can insert it. I might insert it, I don't know, I'll see. We're going to shift. So we were Gemini, Sag here, and now they're just going to move, right? So they're going to move into earth and water and scorpionic waters. I mean, that could be quite deep and it could be a bit stagnant. It could, there could be floods. Um, so sep September, October, 2020. Yes, farmers of Australia, you will get rain, um, but you might not get the kind of rain that you want. It might be too much rain. That is a possibility. Um, but I had predicted floods in southeast Australia uh, around the time of this shift, so I'm keenly watching to see if that materialises or not. Uh, it may or may not. Another prediction that I want to add in about Rahu being in... Taurus. This just came to mind, so I'm just going to insert this in somewhere. I don't know where this is going to go. But um, another thing I want to say about that is that we've got a lot of restriction on what we can say in social media, don't we? And that's happened, I think, you know, Rahu passing through Gemini has introduced like a foreign element, like a noose around our neck kind of thing, right? Um, and I think that that could continue over the next year and a half. So it'll be interesting to see when restrictions go off um, YouTube and, and freedom of speech really is freedom of speech again. Maybe that's for another video. But I do see the next year and a half, I think um, restrictions on freedom of speech, that's, that's just going to continue. But with Rahu, how about we finish on something positive here, rather than it being all negative. So Rahu's in trying to Saturn, which I like. Yeah, so that's the 5-9 relationship there. This is good. I like this. And you personally can use this energy to transition into a career that you are passionate about. And Ketu's placement in Scorpio also really supports this. Um, when there's a big transit happening in that eighth house, I have seen career changes. That definitely happens. It's 
happened to me. Um, so, you know, I've, I've seen that. So, yeah, the eighth house there, or Scorpio. Um, so this is great. I've got a note here. This support for small business people should be there. Keep plugging away. If you are in a small business or if there is some craft or art that you are trying to get brilliant at, this is a really good transit for all that kind of thing. It's a great transit for um, clocking up skills and, you know, building a portfolio and being creative as well. Um, the artist, you know, uh, Venus. So, yeah, this is this is good as well. <clears throat> now, let's take a look at some positive things uh, about the shift with Ketu. What's positive about Ketu shifting into Scorpio? I've got the note here, suppression energy. What could be being suppressed? Um, emergencies or accidents or things unexpected. So if those are suppressed, that could actually be good, right? If disasters are being suppressed, we could quite frankly do with that, couldn't we? So um, this, you know, suppression energy could be a very good thing in some unknown way because it's it's suppressing things. So it's not like we'll read a headline about it, but um, yeah, who knows? Got a note here, you want movement in joint finances. This could be slow. Again, that could be a good or bad thing for you. What are the negative things about Ketu's shift? Okay, so this is an interesting one that I started thinking about this morning and I get the sense there's something in this one. So I've got written here, you might have to depend on people you never thought you would have to depend on or people that you would never dream of depending on. You definitely don't want to depend on that person and oh my God, you have to depend on them. And I... My example for this is just recently one of you asked me to look at the Australia chart and I have been looking into that and I've been looking up Melbourne and I've been seeing what's going on down there and it's awful. I mean, it's really, really bad. So where did I go to get the information? It's actually quite hard to get information about what's really going on down there in Melbourne. So I ended up clicking on a video by Katie Hopkins. I'm not a Katie Hopkins fan. She's kind of famous in England for being very outspoken, very racist, quite mean. She got banned from Twitter. You know, she's, she's not my kind of gal, really. Um, but I ended up going to her to get the information, right? So this is an example of you might have to depend on people you never thought you would have to depend on or you wouldn't want to depend on them or you just go, oh, my God, I definitely don't want to turn to that person or have anything to do with them but then you're depending on them, right? Um, really, really interesting. That is quite a possibility. Now, why do I talk about dependence? Because we're talking about Scorpio, and Scorpio is other people, it's in-laws, but it is, I, I often find this, and this is just through experience and, and working with people and looking at charts and all this, and there's something about dependence in that house. And it, if you're not depending on other people, you will, need to depend on God. You will reach out for God if you're in a deep, dark place in, in Scorpio, right? You'll be reaching for God. You'll be reaching for something or someone. So I've got the note here. Think of a person you would least want help from. You may need their help, okay? Um, I've got the note here. Did you use some of that Sagittarian fire to burn any bridges? Uh, you know, you could be in, a deep, in deep, dark waters <clears throat> without a lifeboat during this transit. Not for the whole transit, right? It, 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 how, how do you get out of this if you're in that situation? Well, this is where you get spiritual and you get good at forgiving and you get good at letting go and you get good at all that spiritual kind of stuff. That would be the lifeboat that you need, okay? So there's always an answer, there's always a way, there's always a solution, so never worry. But, um, but this is a really, really interesting transit. I've got the note how to remedy the above if it sounds very dark, which it does. Excellent time to get spiritual. So as I say, letting go, forgiving, asking for God's help, handing it over to God. You know, um, this is going to be great time to get spiritual, great time to go deep spiritually, um, to call on wisdom of past lifetimes as well, or our ancestors. That's really important because we've got good ancestors. We've got some good ones and we've got some not so good ones. So we can always reach out to them. Uh, sometimes we have to reach out to them to ask for the bad ones to back off. <laughs> um, 
I've got the note, you have the potential to transform your life over these next 1.5 years if you really want to. Your career, how you live, who you are, your money, <clears throat> everything. Everything can potentially um, be quite transformed through this, this particular transit. I've got the note here as well, potential for deep dark nights of the soul. Dark night of the soul, right? This is Caroline Mace territory here um, and others. Many have talked about this. But there's potential for dark nights of the soul and equally when, when it's quite deep and quite dark, the potential for bright, brilliant enlightenment um, is there. It's the earth plane of duality, right? The further you go on one side, you are clocking up. You can't even see this hand, but you're clocking up um, something just as good like so if it's, if it's really, really bad, you're clocking up really, really good. Okay, it's that. So yeah, K2 could take us to some interesting places over this next year and a half. So I think I've just about reached that place where I'm going to talk about the signs. Um, and yeah, I wanted to also say... Thank you so much for subscribing. Thank you so much for liking. Thank you so much for commenting. Thank you for all of your support. It's, um, it's such a joy to do these videos and yeah, having you guys interact and show your support is always hugely helpful. So what we're going to do is we're going to start the, um, the mini reports now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to stop the camera and get a new memory card so that we can start fresh. So now we are going to take a look at the mini reports. Why don't we get stuck in? So I'm going to start with Aries Moon, as I always do. Aries Moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now, where is Rahu and Ketu for you? So you've got Rahu second from the moon and you've got Ketu eighth from your moon. This is quite an inter interesting shift. I also want to say that you can watch how this is. So when I say it's from your moon, you can click on your ascendant sign and I might say from the moon, but just know it'll be from your ascendant. Okay. So um, if you're here watching from your ascendant or moon, welcome. Uh, let's take a look at what this is for you. So I do encourage you to watch both. Watch your moon and watch your ascendant. Now, what will this be like for you? So I'm going to say that your speech will be energized. What you say can attract the right people into your circle during this transit and even into your family or business. Okay, so why do I say that? Because Lord of the second house, Venus, rules the second and seventh houses for you. So this could be a time when you, who knows, you meet, might meet that special someone, right? You might, you might get married. Um, you might expand your business. You might you know, and, and through what you say, how you speak, you might really be able to expand your world. So this is potentially very exciting. Uh, there's a chance for fame. There's a chance to attract a large audience on social media. This is really good. And you've got, I mean, all of this activity is boosted by Saturn being in the 10th house. This is great. Saturn in the 10th house is kind of materializing that next step up in your career. So this is really, really good. Ketu, of course, might be on the other end slowing things down. So if you're not feeling that, Ketu could be there really slowing things down for you related to in-laws or something to do with traveling to be with the family. Maybe you want to travel to be with the family. You can't. Ketu could be um, throwing a spanner in the works there. But, you know, that's okay. Uh, we can work with Ketu. We can always work with Ketu. If you're finding that things are slow or things aren't working for you. Um, I read a Ketu remedy today, which was to wear white or yellow and to avoid gray. So that was news to me because I wear a lot of gray. Um, but this is definitely a great time to become spiritual with Ketu in your eighth house. My goodness, this is wonderful. So you can up your intuition. You can master some occult something or other, right? Maybe you want to learn dowsing. Maybe you want to, that's something I do. I've actually got uh, a dowsing rod right here, which I use. I don't know if you can see that, but I, I love this thing and it helps me um, because I'm not very good at, um, you know, they do the muscle testing thing. I'm terrible at that, but this I know how to use. I was trained in how to use that by Deborah King. So that was really good. Um, you might, yeah, become more spiritual. You might up your intuition. You might master some occult tool or system. 
you know, maybe you'll get your hands on some astrology software or even on a tarot deck or something like that. Fantastic. This is a great time to indulge and to, to get into something like that if you feel so compelled. So Aries Moon, thank you so much. You're very welcome to watch your Ascendant and I'll also leave a link below so that you can watch last year's transit just to catch up and see, okay, did what she say pan out? You know, I often sometimes retrospectively watch astrologers and see what they had said to see, okay, did that turn out? And sometimes, yes, they are very correct, aren't they? Uh, I hope I am. Did I watch my, I haven't watched my one yet. I'll watch it tomorrow. I've been too busy today. But Aries Moon, thank you so much. Thank you so much for stopping by. Please do like and subscribe. And we are now going to welcome Taurus Moon. Taurus Moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So now, well, this is your time, Taurus Moon. Okay, you've got Rahu on your moon. You've got Ketu in your seventh house. This is big. Uh, I've got a note here that please do watch your ascendant as well. Um, that's what I tend to do. I watch my moon and my ascendant when I watch other people. So um, you can watch your ascendant, you can watch your sun, you can watch your favorite planet, but I recommend watching too. Okay, otherwise things will get too confusing. All right, let's take a look for you, Taurus Moon. And the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to leave a link below and you can watch last year's one if you want to do a recap and see, you know, how, how did that play out for you? What did play out, what didn't, right? Um, you can kind of test the sidereal Vedic system. All right, now I've got the note, this is your time. It is, absolutely. Rahu may open your mind wider than before. Um, you've got the potential to totally change your mind about many, many things. It, it's really quite exciting, actually. Um, this is great. This can be a very effective time to totally reprogram your mind and your subconscious mind, if that's something that you want to do. If there's old programming, old conditioning that you need to let go of, you need to get rid of it, and you want to be that new you, you want to succeed now, you want to believe in yourself, you want to trust, you want to take things to the next level, you want to take charge of your life or take charge of your health, you can do that, you really can. Um, I've got the note here, watch teachers like Bob Proctor, Abraham Hicks, you know, learn the law of attraction, really get into that. It's a really brilliant book called um, Something or Other Subconscious Mind, I've just forgotten it. If I remember while I'm editing, I'll put it up on the screen or something like that. It's a very good book. Uh, Saturn is in the ninth house also supporting this. Great. So Saturn's doing his work in the ninth house, which is beliefs as well. It's belief systems, right? So this, this goes deep. Um, changing your beliefs, changing your systems of belief. Good mental work you do in this transit will raise your ability to serve people. You've got Venus Lord of the first and sixth house. So yeah, you know, if you do this work, if you really engage your mind, transform your mind, um, really, and, and it is a self-discovery time. You can really discover yourself, who you are. Take that whole question to the next level. It's the ultimate spiritual question, who am I? You know, do we, do we ever really find out? Um, and some people are very much advanced on that journey. I like, I like watching David Icke for that. I hope by saying his name, I'm not like taken off air or something, but he, is, he really knows who he is, right? And he lives fearlessly. So you've got the potential, I believe, to do that, if that's your goal, okay? You've got to pursue it. You've got to have a goal and you've got to pursue it. This is Rahu. Um, you, you do have to go for it. You have to use your free will to get out of Ketu and go into Rahu, okay? That's important. Because otherwise you're just stuck in Ketu and that's no fun, is it? Because you've been there. Uh, Ketu might slow things down in relationships for you. So if you're single, you may not feel like dating people or meeting people, that's fine. If you're in a relationship, you might just feel happy and content, you know? Um, and, and you might feel happy to do your own thing as well now and then. You might need a bit of breathing space. Yeah, I've got the note here. It's fine to luxuriously concentrate on yourself for 1.5 years. Wow, that's a luxury, isn't it? it? You know, Karl Lagerfeld was asked about what's the greatest luxury that he knows, and he said time. Time is, yeah, that's, that's the greatest luxury for him, so, um, or was anyway. But Taurus Moon, thank you so much for joining. 
Thank you so much for liking, subscribing, commenting, all that wonderful stuff. Do check out um, the link for watching last year's if you want to catch up on that. Uh, or the year before, I think it was 20... I can't even remember. It was 2019. I don't know. It's down below. <laughs> all right. Thank you so much, Taurus Moon. We are now going to welcome Gemini Moon. Gemini Moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. All right, so where's this shift happening for you? Now, before I begin, I'm going to say, please do watch from your ascendant. So when I say it's blah, blah from the moon, know that it's that from the ascendant or your sun or whatever it is that you've clicked on to watch. Um, so you can watch two, right? That's always a good thing to do. So you've got Rahu 12th from your moon. You've got Ketu 6th from your moon or ascendant, depending on what you're watching. Um, this could be really nice. This could be really nice. Pursuing escape or escaping through books, films, stories, spirituality, your imagination. Uh, this activity of, of escape could really invigorate your creativity. As Venus is the lord of your 12th and 5th houses. Okay, so you've got Ketu in the 6th. It might suppress your health a little bit if you're feeling tired, if you don't feel up to it. Um, know that it's good to rest and do you know with all this lockdown and all that kind of thing I actually think people are exhausted we've had decades of yang energy in operation and it's high time for some yin energy it's high time for you know tea and relaxation and rest it's much much needed so um, know that it's good to take time out So, I mean, you might have a suppression here in health, but it's in the sixth. This is actually, you know, this is very good. This is a good transit for money, career, business growth, right? This is great for that. Legal battles can be fought and won, perhaps slowly, perhaps at a sort of considered pace, but you can do well through this transit of Ketu in your sixth. This is actually the better half of the Rahu Ketu bit. Um, Although the escapism thing is nice, but I think you can actually get some results from the Ketu end of the axis. So um, you can do well through this transit if you keep being spiritual and keep being pure uh, in your pursuits and in your intentions as well. So it's looking quite good, Gemini Moon. Um, I wish you well with this transit. And we are now going to welcome Cancer Moon. Cancer Moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now, before I begin, I will say that you are very welcome to watch from your ascendant, from your sun, from your favorite planet, you can choose. So when I say, you know, Rahu is 11th from your moon, it's also from, you know, Rahu is 11th from your ascendant or from your sun or whatever it is that you're looking at, okay? Uh, so for you, Rahu is 11th from your moon and Ketu is 5th from your moon. Okay, this is good, Cancer Moon. Oh, you've got a very nice transit here, I believe. Well, I do believe, I, I, think, I think this is good for Rahu. See how you go with it, see how it manifests, but I'm gonna say that it's a good one. It's a good time, oh no, well it is. It's the 11th, come on. Yes, 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 I can very confidently say that this is good. This is very, very good. No, this is good. This is a great time to earn money, great time for income, great time to grow your network. This could even be a good time to splurge on home renovations, um, Venus being Lord of your 11th, and fourth houses, um, this is great. So all that money pouring in from the 11th, which I wish for you, right? Uh, K to fifth from your moon. Okay, this might make you a bit tired. This, this may, you know, um, put a bit of a dampener on your creativity. You may not feel as creative as usual. Uh, if you're a very creative person and Cancer Moon, I don't see why you wouldn't be. Um, Perhaps not as interested in pursuing romance if you're single. That could be a possibility. I mean, look, there's a dampener on all that, right? The whole world is in a bit of a pickle. But people aren't socializing. Well, I don't know. Maybe that's just me. I don't know. But um, don't worry if you're not feeling like going out and or doing things. I've got to know here, there can be ups and downs financially and in your energy in general. Yeah, and the remedy, I have I read this this morning. I think there could be some truth in this. Uh, Ketu remedies. So one of them was wearing white or yellow as opposed to grey. And you know, there is something in that because white is a Venusian colour. 
It's a very beautiful, um, attractive colour. And yellow is actually, I, I've heard some research, some scientific research on this, that when you wear yellow, your sails go up, right? So I've heard that, that when you wear yellow, your sails go up. If you have pictures of flowers, flowers bring business in, apparently, as well. So there you have it. I mean, it's a Venusian thing, that's a second house thing, that kind of makes sense. But Cancer Moon, this is actually sensational for you. You're one of the lucky ones. You are one of the lucky ones. The Rahu end of this transit is brilliant for you. So I hope you can make the most of it, Cancer Moon. Um, I wish you well. I wish you good health. I wish you safety and all the, all the best stuff. Thank you so much for tuning in. We are now going to welcome Leo Moon. Leo Moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now, as with every sign, you can look up your ascendant if you want to or you can look at this from your sun so wherever your if your sun is in i don't know scorpio then click on scorpio as well or you might want to see your ascendant your ascendant might be in i don't know pisces or something click on that so wherever you're you know whatever you're looking at so if i say rahu is 10th from your moon if you've come here from for your ascendant know that it's rahu 10th from your ascendant okay so and I'll also leave a link below so that you can watch your um, you can watch last year and see what panned out and what didn't, if you want to. All right, Leo Moon. So where's this happening for you? Rahu tenth from your moon and Ketu fourth from your moon. This can potentially be a good transit for career. Hopefully, after the next transit in Gemini, your network circle expanded. And now you're going to be able to get on and build that next level up in your career. So hopefully, because I think you would have had that lovely uh, Rahu in the 11th thing going on, and that would have been brilliant, I hope. Um, and if that did do some good things for you, now it's time to really work with that, whatever you were given there, and build that next level up in career. So that's, that's going to be important. You've got heavy planets in the 6th from your moon. So yeah, this is a time to grow. This might be challenging, but time to grow career-wise. I've got the note here that Ketu may suppress your interest in being at home. Yeah, this is hard with lockdown. Uh, you might feel quite restless. I've got the note here, please look after your mother's health as well. So um, do be mindful of that. Nothing to worry about, but you know, if that kind of thing crops up, um, then you, you've got a reason as to why. Uh, I've got the note B, if you've been trying to buy or move home, th this will be tough at this time, quite potentially. Um, so Leo Moon, that's what I have for you today. Thank you so much for liking, subscribing, doing all that fun stuff. Um, and we are now going to meet Virgo Moon. Virgo Moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. I'm just going to check the time. We're good. Virgo Moon, I can always check the time when I'm with you, can't I? You know what it is to be punctual. You know about that. Um, what have we got here? So now, I, before I begin, I just want to say that you can watch your ascendant, you can watch from your sun, you can watch from your favorite planet. When you're watching from one of those, if I say something like Rahu is ninth from your moon, and if you've come in for your ascendant or something else, then know that it's Rahu ninth from your sun or ascendant or whatever. But for you, we're looking at the moon. Um, Rahu is ninth from your moon. Ketu is third from your moon. All right, so what's this? Great time to expand yourself intellectually. Absolutely. Who doesn't want to do that? You know, it's, um, we've got to go within, right? The best stuff is within. And um, it's really interesting. A lot of introverts are quite enjoying lockdown right now. And just the, the mandatory time of, being at home and reading books. And some people really love indulging in that. I know I, I quite like that. Um, it's a great time to expand yourself intellectually. Is there something you've always wanted to study or learn? This could be a good time for that. Uh, maybe you want a mentor or a guru. This could be a good time for that. To, to bring that, that person in and to work with them. You also might have to, or might want to be careful. It is Rahu that's here after all, but at least the energy of pursuit is there, you know? So, but just be discerning, right? Um, I've got the note here, your words will have power. K through third from your moon will, really wants to help you, really wants to help you. Oh, this is, this is a beautiful, you got a nice thing here. Yes, you do, yeah. Your courage could get a real boost. 
um, you may find it easier to get work as well. Work opportunities might start coming in for you. Maybe you've had a bit of a quiet spell or you haven't worked for a while. Don't worry, work is going to come in. Um, hang in there with Ketu basically, this is good. Time with friends should be really enjoyable if you're in a part of the world where you're able to do that. Um, and there are many places where you can. I, I watched a walking tour of London the other day. Everyone's having a great time from what I saw. So, you know, the, the media is saying that they're not having a good time in London. I watched some direct footage. People seem pretty like they're having a good time. Uh, yeah, no, I'm going to say that you've got a really good Rahu Ketu transit. This is good, Virgo Moon. You're one of the lucky ones. You've got, and yeah, luck. Rahu may make you a bit more lucky than usual with that uh, Rahu ninth, ninth from the moon there. Could be, could up your luck a bit. But the Ketu side of things is really nice. Ketu in the third. There, it's good transit. So Virgo Moon, thank you so much for joining. And we are now going to welcome... Libra Moon. Libra Moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. All right, so now with every single sign I've been saying, please feel free to watch your ascendant and from your sun or from your favorite planet or whatever it is you like, but watch, you can watch two of these. So watch from your moon, watch from your ascendant. Um, but if you're watching from the moon, we've got Rahu eighth from the moon, we've got Ketu second from the moon. All right, so this is a really cool transit. Well, I think it is. I'm, I'm being positive here. Come on. I'm looking for the good stuff for you guys. I think this is good. Rahu may make you even more fascinated with the occult than you already are, right? Um, great time to master your intuition and hone it. So yeah, that's what I think. Work with your intuition. Don't be afraid of your mind or... And this is actually really important. I worked with a psychiatrist in London who ran this great big... Um, psychiatric office. She had like I mean, 50 psychiatrists who reported into her and I used to write all her materials. And um, why did I come down this transit? or well, this pathway in my mind, not transit. <laughs> I've got little planets in my head or something. Um, why did I come here? Yes, don't be afraid of your mind. Very important. That's one of the things that she taught. And that's one of the biggest things that I learned from her, that one mustn't be afraid of the mind. Your mind, and people's minds, come up with all kinds of crazy, stupid ideas, right? Or, 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 or weird things. And you think, God, oh, why did I think that? Don't be afraid or disturbed by that. Let it go. Just watch them like clouds. Everybody has them. Weird thoughts or whatever. So, and that, that is important with intuition. As the more you start to watch the mind, the more you start to work with it, see, see it, feel it, understand it, be okay with it, be okay with its weirdnesses and its quirks, right? Um, this could be an amazing time for you. So you could, you could really master your intuition, you could hone your intuition. Perhaps you might learn a tool like astrology or tarot to help you do that. You might find yourself more psychic than usual, especially depending on how your Venus is placed. This is very interesting. I'm working with my intuition all the time and it, uh, how I do it mostly is just direct. It's just like, okay, just you know, and you know, you know, you know, you know, oh, I, know, I knew I shouldn't have eaten that, right? Intuition is speaking to us on the tiniest of things. So, so see if you can um, really get a handle on your intuition. It's very exciting. Great time to enhance your spirituality. So your level of consciousness has the ability to raise a lot right now by the time this transit is done. This is great. Um, this can also be a time where you either aren't as interested in money or you are really able to transform your finances. It could go either way. Um, it depends on a few things. But yeah, you know, either you're not so into money or you become quite into it and you transform your finances totally. But yeah, Libra Moon, it's looking like a good transit. I would love to have this transit with the uh, Rahu in the eighth there. That's quite interesting. So thank you um, so much, Libra Moon, for joining. And we are now going to welcome, and we are now going to welcome Scorpio Moon. Scorpio Moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. As with all the signs I am saying, please do watch your ascendant as well. I'm sure many of you already do, but like, just thought I might mention it this time. 
especially because it's such a big transit, you know, you might as well watch too. Um, so you can watch from your sun, you can watch from your favorite planet. Um, yeah, there's a lot of opportunities here to watch quite a bit, but I would say do two, don't, don't do more than that. Uh, let's take a look. So for you, you've got Rahu 7th from the moon and Ketu 1st from your moon. Okay, well, it's on your moon. Okay, this, this could be really interesting. Rahu may make you expand your business and or if you're single, it might propel you to meet that special someone, right? Um, Venus is Lord of the 7th and 12th house. Okay, yep. So you can expect... A lot of expenses uh, I would believe right finances could really be up and down so be fiscally conservative as they say right uh, just just you know watch out the next year and a half you don't want to overspend Ketu in the first house you might it might be a bit of a drain on your energy so health wise you may need more rest honor that okay I think I said this in one of the other ones I said something about um, you know we've had decades of yang energy do 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 and we really need to balance this out I think that's part of what's happening with Capricorn Saturn going through Capricorn um, which is kind of forcing everyone to be in their homes but this is great actually we all kind of need that right otherwise we're burnt out and it's no good so yeah, this can be, K2 could be draining a little bit on, on your physical body, but nothing to worry about, nothing to fear or any of that, um, just something to know. K2 can also increase expenses in this position, yeah, yeah, so both on the Rahu and the K2 front for you guys, like expenses, yeah, be careful. Saturn in the third is giving you opportunities, but yeah, you know, it's, I'm a bit disappointed for you guys in that um, I was so excited that you're going to have this Saturn in the third giving you lots of opportunities and now the whole world is in a bit of a mess. Um, but don't let that detract you. Watch some Bob Proctor. He talks about the fact that some people are always in a recession or a depression. It's a mindset. He said there are many people when there's a depression or recession, there are many people that are profiting. And he's absolutely right. Um, I'll tell you who's profiting right now, Brian Rose. Brian Rose has asked people for money and boom, he's got like all these millions of pounds come in and he's expanding and doing this and doing that and all of that kicked off about I think Feb, March of this year. So this transit is really good for him. He could have Saturn third from his moon, you know, I don't know. Um, so don't, even though what I'm saying is that, you know, Expenses and things could be a bit tricky, or um, but don't don't ever just believe just this, right? You can go beyond. Always know that you can go beyond. Okay, if there's anything you hear that you don't feel a hundred percent about, know that you can you can make changes. Okay, but Scorpio, I mean, it's not looking too bad, right? Um, you might want to check out your moon or, or sun or something else as well. But thank you so much stopping by i wish you all the best i wish you well and we are now going to welcome sagittarius moon sagittarius moon welcome thank you so much for joining so you have got rahu six from your moon you've got ketu 12 from your moon also if you want to watch your ascendant or from your sun please do that um, watch two that's always a good idea you can always also watch i'll put a link below to my video last year or last shift or whatever and you can see okay did i've just lived that so what what did she say that was right okay so um the system is right it might be my interpretation of it that is right or not or what you can check that out um okay this is a good transit oh this is a good transit for you yes i'm happy this is good especially in regards to rahu great so you can build your career to that next level okay believe in yourself right um you should be able to handle legal battles and win or that that should work out well for both parties right we always want win-win wherever possible um yeah this, this this is the place of rahu in the sixth where people win over the competition but you know be a bit more libra maybe you know so aim for win-win uh venus lord of the sixth and the eleventh 
brilliant. This is great. Great for you to expand your business network, earn more money. This is good. That's what we want. Keep doing the 12th, they may increase your expenses. Um, do be mindful of that. Yeah, I've got the note here. May make you not so keen on... Um, like if you're in a marriage, partnership, any of that, you might be just a bit happy to cruise, um, you know, cruise along. If you're single, you might be very happy being single, okay, for this year and a half. Great time alone, great for time alone and great for spirituality. So it's a good transit, Sagittarius moon. Um, I'm happy for you. And um, you can always watch another sign, see, you know, how things are playing out. Uh, in terms of your ascendant or sun or something. But thank you so much for joining. And we are now going to welcome Capricorn Moon. Capricorn Moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now let's have a look at what we've got for you. Um, by the way, before I begin, you can watch from your ascendant, you can watch uh, from the sun, you can watch from your favorite planet, something like that. Know that when I say Rahu is fifth from your moon, it could be fifth from your ascendant, fifth from your sun. So let's have a look from the moon. Um, Rahu is fifth from your moon. Ketu is eleventh from your moon. Okay, this is good. I'm liking this Capricorn moon. I've got some good news for you. Uh, you may feel more creative. You might even feel a bit romantic. Who knows? That's always a good thing. This can help you meet someone. You might worry about your kids more than usual though. Okay, so the Rahu side of things is where there's some tension for you. This is not so good. Um, instead of being worried, instead of uh, anxiety and things like that, see if there's some way you can channel that creatively or some something you can pick up or um, teach yourself. Being self-taught, fifth uh, Leo is very, yes, that's, that's always good. Express yourself, you know. Express yourself creatively if you can. And not for an audience. So many times I've done like just drawing and I can't draw to save myself. Unless I'm on a Adobe Illustrator and I have a Wacom graphics tablet. But when it's just freehand, me, oh, it's bad. But I do it just for the joy of doing it. And then I tear it up and I put it in the bin. I get rid of it. So um, let's have a look here. Creativity could be a good outlet. K through from the 11th. Yeah. So you may be able to slowly but surely broaden your networking circles um, or your social media followings or that kind of thing. More opportunities to make money may be brought forward by Ketu's transit. Great. Venus is lord of your fifth and tenth. Okay, you may be able to expand career. Yeah, sure. Um, it's, it's kind of the Rahu side of things, I think, that's um, letting the side down. But you've got a nice Ketu transit there. So I hope you're able to enjoy that Capricorn moon. I hope, I wish you a wonderful 1.5 years. I hope you have a really good transit. And we are now going to welcome Aquarius moon. Aquarius moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So now you're very welcome to watch um, from your ascendant or your sun or your favorite planet or whatever. But I recommend watching too. So know that when I say Rahu is fourth from your moon, it'll be if you're here for Ascendant, it's fourth from Ascendant, all that kind of thing. Uh, so Rahu is fourth from your moon, Aquarius moon, and Ketu is tenth from your moon. Okay. So, yeah, I, I remember when I studied into your chart for this. Um, this I'm not um, as thrilled with this transit for you. So Aquarius moon, you're really one of the few actually in here that, in fact, I no, you're probably the only one that I'm sort of saying, do look up your other sign, okay? So... <laughs> Um, if you're an Aquarius moon, don't just watch Aquarius moon, watch something else as well. Or if you're Aquarius tra um, ascendant, uh, don't just watch the ascendant, watch, watch something else as well. Because I don't see this as being one of the best um, transits. The, the, there are nice things here. It could be um, a good time to renovate your home. Relocation is possible. There are nice things here. But I do have a note, look after mother's health. Nothing to worry about, okay? But just like that's something. Um, Ketu's transit could suppress your career or business from really taking off. That is kind of one of the things I'm seeing. Um, but the thing is, I do think that if, I mean, if you're putting effort in and if you're working, don't worry. You, you, can, um, you can profit. So don't worry, keep working, keep chipping away. Actually, I do, I'm just gonna open up your uh, transit thingy. What have we got going on? 
spend a little bit more time with you I can um, okay oh yeah you've just started your Sadi Sati period as well well yeah so you're going to want to work with Saturn uh, you're going to want to do all the good, you're going to want to build in those good habits and um, structure, structure, structure. You're going to want to do some of that. Get organized, right? Uh, I'm going to be doing at some point a, I'll show you just quickly. I, well, I hope I'm going to do this. I probably am now, but look at that. Isn't that a lovely diary? And I've started doing it already. I started creating a bullet journal. So I'm going to share that with you guys on the channel. Okay, I have to do it now. I've just put it on a video. Okay. Uh, so I'm, gonna do, I'm gonna create a bullet journal maybe you want to I don't know get organized do a bullet journal structure your life all that kind of thing that that might be more the more the thing uh, but I do want to keep looking for you because it's not it, it's not bad right is what, what I'm trying to say but I, I would say that I would want you to um, to look up something else as well which I haven't said for another sign um, yeah if you put in effort you're gonna be fine also, perhaps other things are happening in your chart where you can really profit, yeah. With Rahu, you may feel like being at home more. This is a good thing, okay? If you're an introvert, hallelujah, right? This is great. Um, being on your own and being very spiritual during this transit will help remedy this transit. Absolutely, there are always remedies, okay? There's always things we can do, and these can be very, very profitable times. Um, and I, I will recommend, have I recommended Bob Proctor to you? I have in a couple of other signs. Do watch some Bob Proctor. He always talks about the fact that there are depressions and recessions. And some people, he said, mentally, they're always in depressions and recessions. He said, you've got to not do that. He said, for some people, their business is always failing and they're always losing money and they're always this and that. And he said, at any time, even when there are depressions and recessions going on, there are people who are profiting. There are people who are doing well and you can make that happen okay so no aquarius moon that while i'm not i don't have the greatest of news to deliver um, for this transit for you know that you can go beyond always you can always go beyond i've done i have gone beyond stuff i, I should do a video about that one day i will one day i will but i have gone beyond stuff where people have told me oh you can't do this and actually that is i Maybe this was the place where I needed to do it. Maybe I needed to do it in the predictions. It is in the predictions. I didn't do it. I'll do it for you. Let this be your success story. If things aren't so brilliant, right, at any time, let that be the success story that you then tell in 20 years' time when everyone says, oh, you know, you, your life looks so perfect. Have you ever had it tough? And you can go, well, yeah, I have. You know, I, I turned this around or that around. You know, I turned X, Y, Z around. Um, I'm just going to turn this off. Whoops, sorry, I'm being distracted by my phone. Okay, Aquarius Moon, I wish you all the best. And, um, you know, yeah, no, I, I think this is going to be an interesting time. Okay, and, and you can always um, book me for a reading or something like that, and I can have a look further if, if there's something you want to look at. In more depth it's not bad what you got but it's, it's not one of the best i don't have a huge amount of good news for you so that's why i'm saying do watch another sign all right let's let we're going to meet uh, pisces moon now pisces moon pisces moon welcome thank you so much for joining all right so now i think you've got a good thing going on here if i remember correctly um I've, as with every sign i've been saying watch from your ascendant watch from your sun watch from somewhere else so if you're here for Pisces moon but if you're here for Pisces ascendant know when I say Rahu is third from your moon it's third from your ascendant like that okay so Rahu is third from your moon you've got Ketu ninth from your moon I'm loving this this is a great transit regarding Rahu you are going to have the courage to go for it you're going to have the courage to put yourself forward to try new things it's great for communications, great for upping your professional profile. The battery's flicking at me, so let me try and be quick. Um, great for upping your professional profile. Great for, you know, trying for promotions. If you want a promotion, this could be a time that you try for that. You'll be more prominent in social circles, fame, increase in social followings. This is great, right? Um, K3 in the ninth is not so great, okay? So the only things you have to watch out there, watch out how things go in relationship with your father. Um, Health-wise, 
you may need to take it easy at times, he may need to take it easy at times, okay? And I've got the note, um, when debating, don't try to convince the other of your point of view. Don't we all know about that? I'm sure we do, but look, the battery's flickering at me. Pisces Moon, I just want to thank you so much for joining. Anyone who's watched this whole thing, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for liking. Thank you so much for commenting and subscribing and doing all that wonderful stuff. And I look forward to seeing you next time. Thank you.